Hello, N4HNH here with a, I'll, I'll call it a bonus video, a midweek video. Hear that noise? Let me turn it up. Annoying, isn't it? Now, if, if you've been on my channel very long and you've watched a lot of my past videos, I've talked about filter ripple, filter ripple, uh, that ringing sound you're hearing there on CW. Now, this is not just entirely a CW video, for those of you who might be saying, well, I don't do CW, so I'm going to tune away. Yeah, hang in there. But um, that does sound like filter ripple. The sound you get when you've got a tight filter enabled. If you've watched the videos in the past, you've heard me talk about the Chebyshev filter curve and the Butterworth filter curve. So I'm not going to get into that here. You can go back and watch some of the other videos that talk about CW filtering. But... Uh, you know, the tighter the filter, the more prominent you will have of the filter ripple, the ringing sound. And of course, the advantage to that tighter filter is you can block interference from stations above or below where you're listening. And so for more information on that, go back and watch some of the other videos. But I want to show you that, uh, let me turn it up. I've got digital noise reduction enabled and audio peak filter. I'll turn all that off. The filter is set at 50 hertz so it's a tight filter I'll, I'll increase it to 300 which is the roofing filter I have installed so now the digital filter is equal to the roofing filter okay so now I'm going more narrow with digital I've got the 300 hertz roofing filter and I'm using digital to go even more narrow and basically what you're left with is what sounds like filter ripple and normally that's what that would be I'm going to re-engage the digital noise reduction and listen to the difference. Subtle. It helps a little. Um, let me tell you, show you where it's set. It is on algorithm 15. They call them levels, but they're really algorithms. The digital noise reduction. Yes, I use it on CW because it helps combat that ringing. But I, I, I'm going to just tell you this ringing you're hearing right now is not filter ripple. I'll reveal what it is in just a moment. And hopefully it'll help someone out there. Now I'm gonna turn on audio peak filter for an illustration here, listen. Notice how it boosts it a little bit, it gets a little bit louder. That's what the audio peak filter's for. The, it takes the, I'm gonna press the menu button here on the FTDX 10. And what I'm showing you right now applies to all radios, y'all, but hey. Just using the FTDX10 as an example. My CW pitch set at 600 hertz. That's also called a side tone. What the audio peak filter does is focuses on whatever my side tone frequency is and boosts it with a very narrow filter. So again, it's a way to help um, combat signals you don't want to hear above or below where you're listening. But it also will amplify the filter ripple because it's amplifying the frequency that my side tone is set to, my CW pitch. So I'll turn it off for now, but you still hear the noise, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the audio peak filter back on. Okay, here it's boosting a little bit. Now I'm going to eliminate the noise and then I'll show you what's causing it. Listen to that. Quiet as a mouse when they're not sending. Well, what did I do? I'll show you. I unplugged this laptop power supply. They're notorious, especially these big bricks. Uh, but uh, yeah, laptop power supplies are nasty. So if you're hearing noise like that in the shack and you're thinking that it's filter ripple, Mm. Check and see if you might have a laptop power supply in your home somewhere plugged in. Unplug it and you're good. Now, my shack is also my office, so um, and I'm working a lot sometimes with the laptop. And so what I'll do is I'll charge the laptop up so I can listen to the radio while I work and not run it on the battery. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, not run it on the power supply. I will let it run on the battery. But that's what's causing that noise. It's not filter ripple. Now, I'll show you real filter ripple. I'm going to turn off digital noise reduction. See how it sounds the same? 
that is filter ripple. But the digital noise reduction can, can eliminate it. There you go. I've shown in the, on the channel how to uh, use gain stages, you know, uh, to uh, help that out. In other words, you want to try to minimize the noise in the front end of the receiver. Those of you who have been on the channel a while know that. And then let the DSP, the digital noise reduction in this case, uh, put the icing on the cake. So just, you know, be aware that the noise you may hear in your radio might not be coming from filter ripple. And in this case, it sounds the same, whether it's from the power supply or filter ripple, but the power supply is much nastier because digital noise reduction is engaged. And I'm gonna plug that power supply back in. Now it's so nasty that even the digital noise reduction cannot take care of it. And by the way, it's coming off the antenna, not in the shack. Here's a dummy load. It's coming off the antenna. In this case, the doublet. Oh, sorry, there's the doublet. There's the ZS6 BKW. They're my most sensitive antennas. Here's my vertical, off center fed dipole, vertical. ZS6 BKW and doublet. The, the doublet is definitely the most sensitive antenna, especially on this band. And therefore, it's picking up that power supply the best, which is sitting on the floor right now in my basement, just to show you how nasty these things can be. Now, there are other sources of noise that you can have in your home. I've shot videos about that in the past as well. Um, you know, I'll just throw a couple out at you, you know. Uh, uh, low quality LED bulbs, lamps, uh, wall wart power supplies, little square power supplies you plug in the wall. I even had an issue with a power supply that was very similar to a laptop power supply that powered a, uh, a baby rocker, a thing that you put the baby in and it automatically, you know, has a motor and it rocks the baby for you. Again, another nasty power supply. And just remember the trick to, to determine for sure if the noise is coming from within your own home is to turn off the main breaker panel, turn off the breaker uh, that powers your entire house, run the radio on a battery, and you know, I keep a battery in here anyway, a BIO-NO, B-I-O-E-N-N-O, -N -N uh, 12 amp as a, as a backup for emergency purposes. Power the radio with a battery, and if the noise is still there and you've got your main breaker in your house turned off, mm, the noise is probably coming from somewhere outside of your home. Um, but if the noise is not there, then you know that the noise is coming from something that is powered in your home. So then you just do a process of elimination after you uh, turn your breaker back on. And remember, of course, yes, you're going to have to reset your clocks when you do that. Your microwave clock, things like that will uh, reset. But it is a quick way to determine whether the noise is something external to your home or internal to your home. And, uh, you know, before you go calling the power company or the cable company or somebody like that to blame them for the noise. And, and by the way, in this case, that definitely does not sound like a power line. That is clearly not a power line. It's not a buzzing sound. Now, while it's still plugged in, I want to show you that it also affects sideband. I'm going to uh, tap my band key. And now I'm on, I'm using band stacking. This is, uh, by the way, FTDX 10 firmware version 01-04. It's not the newest firmware and the reason is I like the way the band stacking worked in this firmware. I can double tap band and cycle through the three different registers of the band stack for 20 meters. I can switch bands and do it again for another band. This is a really convenient uh, uh, feature that Yaesu radios have, this band stacking. So now I'm on sideband and look at the S meter. I'll pan up to the big monitor so you can see the S meter very well. Look at that. S7 bouncing to S7.5 of noise. And you think, well, that just sounds like band noise. Hmm. What, ab what about the possibility that it's not? And right now, I'd have a hard time hearing anybody weaker than an S, especially an S5 or 6. But, um, you know, weaker than S7, they're not going to be uh, coming in really clear. Now watch this. I just unplugged that power supply and look at the noise level now. 
That's band noise. That's normal. But look how much of an improvement I've got. So you're sitting, you, you know, again, notice how much it sounded like sideband atmospheric noise. Hard to tell the difference. Same thing over there on CW. It sounded like filter ripple, didn't it? Here, it's, here it sounded like band noise. That There you go. There's band noise. Let me, um, let me plug it back in a minute. See, look, you can barely tell the difference by the sound, but look at the S meter. I've just blocked weaker signals from coming into my receiver and being heard. And now unplug it again. So uh, I'll go back to CW in this on a high note. There we go. I've got the volume up to be able to hear any filter ripple at all. So if someone were sending right now, there's a normal volume, just like at the beginning of the video, you would just hear their tone. So I hope someone out there found this tip helpful and informative. If you're wrestling with noise uh, coming through your radio and you just think that it's something you have no choice but live with, eh, do a little bit of investigating and, um, and see if it might be something from within your home. Like I said, first thing you can do is power the radio on a battery, turn off the main breaker. If the noise is gone, it's something from within your home. Flip the breaker back on and go around the home, uh, you know, unplugging things like wall warts, computer power supplies, a wireless phone charger will cause it as well. Uh, my wireless phone charger was even affecting two meters VHF. So it's gone. <laughs> um, so just, just try all those different things out and you may find, wow, uh, my radio is able to hear again, even on weak signals. And I sure hope that, uh, you would be able to find that and enjoy your radio a little bit more after watching this video. Hey, I want to thank my Patreon supporters for helping keep this channel going. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do this and bring this type of content. Um, this is somewhat of an Elmering channel, so your support uh, helps me continue this mission. Therefore, you are partnering with me in Elmering uh, others who are interested in amateur radio, so I do appreciate that. And if anyone else would like to become a Patreon supporter of the channel, uh, please consider doing that. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And uh, that would be much appreciated. Listen how quiet that was. And now, now we hear a signal. Isn't that great? Why listen to all that noise? So anyway, uh, yes, so uh, please do... Uh, become a Patreon supporter if you would and help me continue this mission if you like this type of content and you want to uh, vote for me to continue doing it. And also to please like the video. That helps as well. Uh, it improves the search algorithms within YouTube so the channel becomes more visible to others. So that would help as well if you'll click like. And of course, uh, hey, consider subscribing to the channel and... Um, and please, if you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Hey, thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. And I want to say 73 from N4 H&H. &H.